Hello! Welcome to this lecture in which you are going to discover how the energy balance will help you to determine the annual energy demand for space heating and cooling. I remind you that when designing the energy systems of a building, there are two things we are really interested in. The first one is to be able to choose the right size of the heating and cooling equipment that was the subject of the last lecture. The second thing you really want to know is about the energy demand and how to minimize it. In the end, this energy demand will determine your energy costs or energy bill together with the efficiency of the chosen equipment. In this course, we don't look at the equipment, but only at the energy demand. Do you remember that we calculated very easily the energy used by a television by multiplying the power by the number of hours of use? That is easy because the power of a television is constant. But the power for the space heating and cooling demand depends on outdoor temperature and solar radiation and is changing all time, at least in many climates. See here the hourly temperature curve between the begin of the Dutch spring and the summer and the changes in solar radiation on uh, the right in the same period. Of course, if you are living in a very stable climate, the seasonal differences may be very limited. However, in most climates, we need to make year-round calculations in order to produce good estimates of the energy demand. Well, basically, there are three ways of doing that. The full load hours method, the degree day method, and finally, carrying out hourly calculations over one whole representative year. The first method is to use equivalent full load hours. These equivalent full load hours are determined by studying the ratio of energy demand and nominal power for a large number of existing buildings. The average ratio of both is what we call the equivalent full load hours. Once you know these full load hours for your region and for the types of building under consideration, you just need to multiply the nominal power of your specific building by the full load hours to get an estimate of its yearly energy demand. Let's study further how it works in practice. There are three steps. On the left, the steps. On the right, the example. As example, we take again the small apartment we studied in former lectures. The first step is to calculate the nominal powers for space heating and space cooling. If you remember the former lecture, we found for this apartment a nominal heating power of 1.8 kW. For the cooling, it was 2.2 kW. The second step is to look in the literature, norms or guides for estimations of the full load hours. For instance, in the Netherlands, for a residential building, the full load hours for heating are around 1500, while there are only 100 for cooling. The last step is to multiply the nominal power by the full load hours, which gives an annual energy demand for space heating of 2700 kilowatt hour. For the cooling, it is 220 kilowatt hours. Quick and dirty estimations, often made by experts with a good feeling for local full load hours. The second method is called the degree day method. It is based on analysis of the outdoor temperature from which people start to heat their building or to cool it. We will come back in a minute on the calculation of these degree days. Once you know the degree days, you can use the nominal powers for heating and cooling to calculate the yearly energy demand using the two formulas below on the slide. Let's look in a bit more details to the estimation of these heating and cooling degree days. TO is the daily average outdoor temperature of a certain day. 
TO ref heating is the reference outdoor temperature. Below this outdoor temperature, people start heating their building. This reference temperature depends on habits and preferences of people and is therefore country dependent. For example, in the US, T ref heating is 18 degrees C, 65 Fahrenheit, while in most European countries it is 15.5 degrees. Let's take the example of a certain day, day X, with an average outdoor temperature of 6 degrees. According to the formula above, the number of degree days for this day will be the maximum between 18 minus 6, which is 12, and 0, 12, 0, 4. In the Netherlands, it will be 9.5. If we take now day Y with an average daily temperature of 20 degree, the degree days for this day will be 0, which is the maximum between minus 2 and 0. The number of annual degree days is the sum of all these daily degree days. It works exactly the same for the cooling degree days, but it is noticeable that the reference temperature for cooling is in many con countries identical to the reference temperature for heating. This is very conservative because there should be a bandwidth of outdoor temperatures for which no cooling or heating is needed. There are many papers in literature proposing improvements to these calculations. In particular, the fact that the cooling degree days do not account for solar radiation is criticized a lot. OK, how does a calculation with degree days look like? Left, the steps, right, the example. Here again, we need first to have determined the nominal powers for heating and cooling. In our example, 1.8 and 2.2 kilowatt. Then you need to find somewhere what are the degree days in your region. In the Netherlands, the heating degree days are around 2600, while the cooling degree days are very low for residential buildings, around 120. And finally, you need to use these long equations. You see in these equations TIH and TIC, which are the indoor temperature used when calculating the nominal powers for heating and cooling, respectively 20 and 24 degrees C in our example. TO min is the lowest outdoor temperature we use to calculate the nominal powers. I remind you in blue on the right that TO min was minus 10. In cooling mode, TO max is the highest outdoor temperature we took 30 degrees. So, now we can make the calculation which lead to 3744 kilowatt hour yearly heating demand and 1056 yearly cooling demand. The degree day method is widely used and very powerful when it comes to the normalization of energy demands in different years. It offers a good way to make fair comparisons between years and between climates. However, its application to make estimates of the yearly energy use based on nominal powers is not recommended. Although full load hours and degree days may be very useful for a quick estimate of the magnitude of the energy demand, it is evident that they are very inaccurate. The main reason for this is that they are based on averages on different buildings and do not account for the specific characteristics of the building under consideration. In the table, you see the actual realistic energy demand of the apartment building we considered in the example and the results by the full load hour method and the degree day method. The magnitude is OK, but there are very large errors. It is clear that we need a better method. We also need a method that could help us in choosing and sizing the right building components like window size or degree of insulation. They are very poorly reflected in full load hours and degree day methods as their effect is solely accounted for in the determination of the nominal power which deals with only one short moment in the year. So we know how the window size affects the power at this short moment, but we don't know how it affects it during the remaining part of the year. 
And that is the reason why making energy balances for each hour of the year will lead to much more accurate estimations. You saw at the beginning of this presentation how lead temperature and solar radiation data. If we have this data from, for instance, a meteorological institute, we can make very easily an energy balance per hour. And if we can make it for one hour, we can also make it for more hours. Well, from now on, you will never forget again that there are 8760 hours in one year. Happily enough, we don't need to do this manually, we can use software like Excel or Python or whatsoever. By the way, this is also the principle that is used by most building simulation software like Energy Plus, ESPR, Transys, etc. One additional word on the meteorological data. You can use data for one single year, but if that year was a very warm one or a very cold one, the results will not be representative of an average year. Working with a so-called try year, test reference year, is better because it has been chosen as being representative. Even better is to use TMY years, typical meteorological year, of WIAC years, weather year for energy calculations. They both are closer to the long-term averages. Let's now take a closer look at, uh, to the hourly calculations over one year. Let's start with hour one and make the energy balance. If the unbalance is negative, there will be heating needed during this hour. If the unbalance is positive, there will be cooling. In the table right, I just have chosen arbitrarily one of them for the sake of demonstration. And we do the same for hour two and go further to hour n and finally to hour 8760. We know now for each hour if there is heating or cooling. And the only thing we need to do to get the yearly heating demand is to add all hourly heating demands. And for the annual cooling demand, we add all hourly cooling demands. Quite easy in the end. And this is the result for our example. I did the calculations for you and came to 3646 kilowatt hour annual heating demand and 605 yearly cooling demand. And I also plotted the graphics with all hourly loads. To summarize this lecture, we have seen three different methods to estimate the annual energy demand for heating and cooling. The full load hours, the degree day method, and finally, making hourly energy balances for each of the 8760 hours of a year using meteorological data. The full load hours and degree day methods are easy to use as they need very few climate data, only the extreme temperatures and the maximum solar radiation, but they are also very inaccurate. That is why making hourly energy balances is the preferred method. Thank you for your attention.